welcome to Ephemera Files by Tommy and I am working on my project that I'm doing with Dear Julie Julie, the May Mayhem Mystery Junk Journal Challenge. I think I said that right. And I went ahead and I pulled from my two dishes here and if you want to see how that works I will link her stuff below. And what I'm making in this video will be five tabs that came from the parts bowl and I will be using as embellishments or enhancements embossing, a file card, and a gift bag or a bag. I'm just going to show you this real quick and I realize that it is huge. I don't know if I can back up any, not while I'm making a video, but this is how I store, whoo, but this is how I store my scraps. I have these envelopes that I got from different places. I think scrapbook.com and Amazon and it's a mix. But I've gone through and labeled each of them with the color of the scrap, or if it's a specific kind like lined paper or book page or sheet music, all of that. And I put the scraps in here, but my tub is full. So I am going to try to use some of this as well. So I'm gonna look and see what I've got. Ooh, there's a paisley blue. I don't know if that goes with the colors, but it's a paisley, so I'll pull that out. There's just a bit of plain blue. I don't want to just pull out all the blues because that would just kind of defeat the purpose of being organized. Let's see. I think that's the same paper there. I may pull those out and just use them throughout the journal so I've got some continuity. I think these blues are a little too bright. There's some more of that paisley. Let's see. That might this this will work. That one will work. Oh my goodness, look at all that paisley. I don't know that those colors will work, but they might, so I'm going to pull that out. This is some specialty paper. I think I'll see what happens with that. That may emboss very well. I am, I'm thinking it will emboss. Oh, quite well. And there's some more of it. And I don't know. That blue might work. Let's pull a couple of pieces of that out. Pull some more of this out. That's too dark. That's purple. I don't even know why it's in the blue. So let's see what we can do with these blue pieces that I've pulled out. I don't think all the tabs are going to end up being blue, but I will be using blue and deep red in this journal. So let's just see what I can make. I think according to the rules, if I remember correctly, everything that I make does not have to go into this particular journal that I am working on for the challenge. Let's just look through the reds real quick and see. Now that's a red and it's a paisley, but it's like a bandana color. I don't think I want to do that, but I do think I see some reds that will work as well. I am using, oh, what kit is it? I will put it on the screen right here because I'm going to have to look it up. It's a floral kit from Dear Julie Julie. That red will work. See, I'll do like I did with the blues. I'll pull out several of that color. I don't have to use everything that I pull out of here. That's green. That's in the wrong place. from a piece of junk mail. <laughs> it says account notice enclosed, but what it is is they want you to subscribe to something. And I think that's got a little bit too much brown in it. It's a little too aged. You don't have a lot of red scraps. <laughs> I know that there's also some yellow in it, so let's look and see what I've got in the yellows. Okay. 
And it's going to be more of a gold yellow than a yellow yellow. That's not really yellow, but it'll work. It's a parchment paper. This parchment paper would be good for backing writing uh, spots. That's pretty. I don't remember where that's from. It's a digital from somewhere. That one's a little bit too dark. That actually has a rose embossed on it already because it's from, let's see, who has the rose embossing? I think it's Hallmark. That's just the flap off of an envelope. I have some specialty paper in here. I don't know that I can use that for the tabs, but I may use it elsewhere in the journal. Specialty paper. Um, I might try that. So the first tab, I'm actually going to make this a tab with a pocket behind it. So what do I want to do with this? I can do embossing. Actually, I can do embossing. I'm gonna do different embossing on each of the tags. So I think on this one, I'm going to do some heat embossing. So first I'm gonna get my inks out. And I have this stamp, this Paisley stamp, that I think, yep, it'll go off the ends, which is fine with me, because then it looks like it's continuous. And I'm probably gonna do this just here and just here, and then put something else in the middle. And I think I may just go ahead with that color because that goes with the inside of the journal. And that's the aged mahogany, so I may have to test it because last time I discovered that it's, I think it's getting kind of dry. And I did, I said I was going to put some of my ink refresher on it and I didn't. And you want to, when you use the ink refresher on your ink pads, yeah, that works just fine. Um, when you use the ink refresher on your ink pads, you want to spray it and then let it sit for a little bit before you use it. Let it get down into where it needs to get. Alright, so I'm going to try to line this up and this is hard to do because, am I even on screen? I am. Okay. This is hard to do because you can't get right above it or else my head's in the way and you can't see it. I can't get right above it because my head gets in the way and then you can't see it. That's probably the better way to put that. All right, so, ouch, and I can't stand on my tippy toes yet because of my ankle. So, we're just gonna hope. I'm gonna put it down, press it down, hope for the best. How about that? All right. Now I'm going to get some embossing powder out. And I'm using clear embossing powder. And sometimes you'll see people go flick, 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 and you're not supposed to do that. Um, I have seen Tim Holtz and other people just do this. Just kind of tap on it with your nails. And you can take a brush. It's probably not the right kind of brush, but you can brush it away from anywhere that you're not wanting the embossing. I have a... Oops. I have a little 
pad over here, a little, not pad, a little bag of, um, oh, antistatic bag. That's what it, that's what it's called. If you use it, then it helps to keep the embossing powder from sticking anywhere except for the wet ink. So I'm going to heat this until it melts. I'll turn the uh, volume off. <laughs> Real quick, I want to show you the difference. You can see this one is shiny now because embossing powder is actually plastic and what you're doing is you're melting it and it's becoming glossy and it just reflects the light and it's very pretty. This is what it looks like before you emboss it with just the embossing powder on it and it's still pretty dull so it's easy to see when your embossing powder has set because it will change right in front of your eyes. All right, so I like that. I'm gonna let it cool off for just a minute. All right, I'm gonna put my embossing powder back in the jar before I forget. And I am contaminating <laughs> my clear embossing powder with some blue. It's not blue, it's iridescent. I think it'll be okay. It's just a little bit and it'll just be a little something different. All right, so there's one way of embossing. And to finish this, let's look and see what we can do. I think that this actually will work because these are the other colors that I'm using and that blue looks good and right there's that color so let's see what we can do with this I think I think I may fussy cut this particular little piece out let's see on the smaller piece on this other piece if there's another one that I like better I think I'm going to cut this piece out right here and I'm just going to glue it on the edge. I'm going to make a little cluster on it. Okay, so I need to figure out how I want to do that. I am going to ink the edges of this and I'm gonna go look through my digitals because I wanna put one of those on there as well. I really think that this kit is beautiful and I want to use one of these inner images and I'll cut it out as a frame so that I or cut it out of the center so that I can use the outside as a frame in another place in the journal. So what I need to do is I want to figure out which one this will look best with. How am I going to do this? Am I going to do it this way? I think I want to put that there and then put the picture here. So I am going to choose like Pikachu. I choose you. I like that one. So I am going to get my cutting mat out and my knife and cut that one out of the center. See, do I want to leave the white frame around it? I think maybe I do, just to kind of offset it. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to ink the edges. What color do I, I think I'm gonna pick up on that blue and use the Distressed Mariner. No, <laughs> the Uncharted Mariner Oxide. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna center that right there. I'm gonna put this right here. I think maybe, hmm, so I've got the embossing, I've got this, I've got inking, but I feel like it's still lacking something. I found this on my laundry room floor. It came out of one of my chindi rugs. And of course I save all the things that come out because those things do come apart sometimes. And I think maybe just a bit of this might be what's needed here. But I need to figure out how much a bit of this would be. Do I want to put it behind everything? Do I want to turn it that way? This is going to be a pocket, so I need to make sure that I'm not impeding the opening side. So if I put that there, Put that under. Here, I'll just, I'll rip it in half. That'll take up less space and maybe it'll make it easier for me to figure out what I'm doing. Let's see, I'm not sure this will rip in half. We'll find out, won't we? It didn't want to cut very easy. Nope, okay, so we're gonna have to Need, need a different pair of scissors. All right, so let's try this again. I unrolled that edge and look at that blue that came out that I didn't even know was there because it was rolled up in the green. All right, so I am going to, I think I'm gonna leave it long like that because you can still see the embossing through it. I'm gonna put this one on the top, just like that. I'm gonna bring the blue over to the edge. It will not mess with the pocket, but I think it'll look really good over there. And I think I'm gonna slide this one under and I'm actually gonna come down here and cover up part of the embossing. Partly because that way you still see the blue flower, partly because I think it's gonna be more visually interesting to do it like that. Yes. And I think before I do all that, I wanna ink around these edges and I'm gonna use the aged mahogany that I embossed with. That's going to show on the other side, but I like that. Or that's that's old. I like the colors that are on there just from being old. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac since I am gluing. I probably, I used glue stick there just to hold it. I am using Fabri-Tac and it'll go through. I need to do this one first. This one will go behind it. But I'm going to use Fabri-Tac on the other piece that goes on top because it will help hold that piece of fabric down. I'm not even sure what kind of fabric it is. Yep. 
All right, and so when I put this on a page, it will be on it like this. Let me find a piece of paper here. I can pretend it's a page. Whoops, that's a short one. It'll be on a page like that. And what I'll do is I'll glue these three sides and it'll be a pocket on the side, but then it will also be a tab that you'll see on the back of this page facing the other page. So there is one tab. That was a lot of time for one tab. I hope the others go faster. All right, so I had a couple of pages that misprinted and two of them exactly like this. That is where it stopped. So I'm going to use this. I'm gonna cut this piece out. This tab should be much faster. I just happen to have a tab punch. And I think that this will be very pretty. Very simple, very pretty. Now, the problem is that you need to make sure if you're gonna have one that folds over like this, if you've got a tab like this, you need to make sure that your fold is inside that cut line right there or you're just gonna have two small tabs. Now, if that happens, you can glue them together. It's not that big a deal. But I kind of like mine to just fold over. Just like that. Each of them has to have three embellishments or enhancements. Now, one thing I can do and that I am going to do is I am just going to ink around the edges. That's one. And then I am going to try out this new plate that I've got. Not plate, embossing folder. So I'm gonna open up this up. It's a Spellbinders Platinum 6. And I realize that not everybody has an embosser like this, but not everybody has a heat gun or embossing powder either. I'm just trying to show as many ways as I can to do embossing and decoration. I like the new embossing platforms that they have, the base, because it tells you how to build your sandwich. So I've got the platform base, and then I need the platform top. Let's see, yep. And then I need my folder right here. Okay, there we go. Embossing mat, and then the adapter plate if necessary. So the way you find out if it's necessary is if you can just push it through, you need the adapter plate. And you don't want to have to force it through. So you may have to adjust your um, sandwiches. Like right there, that's too much. So I need to take something out. All right, this is thinner than the other one was. And yes, you should just feel a little resistance because it is pushing down. And things are gonna shift whenever you have that gray mat in the middle because it's squishy and it just kind of shifts. But that should not affect your embossing at all. All right, so let's open it up and see what we got. Oh, that's pretty. Get out of there. All right, I don't think you can see it right now there is some embossing on there, little leaves and flowers, and I am actually going to kind of pick up on those. And this is Delicata Golden Glitz. Um, I don't know where I got it. It says Sukineko. So, and the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna buff it on. So I'm gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna very lightly go over this as many times as I need to. And if you have a raised design, you want to kind of go across it. If you like if you have a line going this way, go across it that way as much as possible. That way it kind of takes the ink off of your finger and grabs it onto the paper. And you don't want to be too heavy handed or else you're just going to put ink on everything and it's not going to show your embossed pieces.
and it's pretty subtle. I don't even know if you're going to be able to pick it up on the camera. I think maybe a photo would show it better, so I will try to get a really good picture of it. But I think this turned out beautiful. So I've embossed it, I have inked the edges, and I have added gold inking to the embossing. And like I said, I don't know if you may not be able to pick that up at all, but it's very pretty. And then it'll just fold in half and glue on a page. And I think that that turned out really well. Pretty simple, but it looks super elegant. I like it. All right, I'm gonna wash my finger off because I do not want to be a James Bond movie. If you get it, let me know. All right, so that is the second time of type of embossing. We have done heat embossing, machine embossing, and I have this little embosser, and it works a lot like a paper punch. And you may not be able to see these results either, but I am going to try to show you. You just position it and push as hard as you can. And you can see that little rose, I hope. Can you see the rose? I don't know if you can see the rose. There's a little rose there. Let's see if I can do that same trick and kind of show you what I'm talking about. Just kind of buff over it. Now you can see it. It's almost like magic, huh? So that's another type of embossing. And so I need to make a tab out of this. I'm going to ink around the edges of this real quick. And this is going to actually go onto a tab. That one will probably be big enough. And I'll just line it up and it will have the scallops on the ends, but not on the sides. Which I think will be okay because I'm going to fold it in half anyway. And I was going to be cutting away part of it anyway. So I think it's going to be just fine. If I can get it lined up the way I want it to be lined up. And I can just fold this in half. And I can put that on there. And I think that that'll be a really pretty tag. Tab. Tab, tab, tab. I just need to decide which side I want this to be on. I think I want it on that side. So I'm going to ink the piece that I just cut out. And I'm going to put that on there. And I have embossing, I have inking, I have shading. See, this counts as an emboss as a as a piece but i want to put something else on there too maybe let's see i've got these butterflies up here that one's small too well that one looks good i think i'll try that one Whenever I do butterflies, I bend. I put my thumbnail at one side of the body and bend the wing up and put my thumbnail at the other side of the body and bend the wing up. Wing up. And then I make sure and I ink the back because you never know if any of that's going to show or not. So if it's going to show, let's make sure it looks good, okay? That clicking noise, I finally figured it out because I don't hear it. I just heard it that time. It is my camera apparatus and I think I need to find the heavier duty springs that came with it as an alternative because I think that maybe my camera is just a little heavy. 
for it. So I apologize for the ping thing that you hear every so often. But right now I can't do anything about it until I find the springs. All right, so there's tab number three. Let's see, what kind of embossing have we not done? We have not, oh, Julie would do water embossing. I've not been successful with that yet, but I would suggest you watch her channel. She's got a, a video that shows how to do it and hers look good. I can't figure it out. Another way of embossing, and this is how we used to do it in the olden days, <laughs> is we would have stencils. And around here somewhere I have some metal stencils that I used. I mean, I had those for, I've had them for a long time. I think this is the one that I want, maybe. And for this, you would put the paper on top. There's the one I wanted, this one. To do this one, you'll put the paper on top of your stencil. And then I used to use a crochet hook or the back of an ink pen or something like that to do this. So you really don't have to have any fancy tools and you can use a lot of different things for a stencil. It doesn't actually have to be marked as a stencil on the labeling. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to grab a piece of I'm going to try the red. I'm going to try some of the red. And you put the paper over the stencil. This paper may be a little bit too thick. I don't know. We'll find out. And you take your tool, whatever it is. This is a special tool that's meant for doing this. But like I said, you can use a crochet hook. And when you push down, you'll kind of feel where the stencil is. I don't know if you can see that. I have a perfect little circle there, which means I found the middle of the flower. And so I just kind of feel around from there for where the edges of things are. And it's not, it's not easy, and it's been a long time since I've done this. So I'm trying to feel for the edges of the design. And I'm just following. When there's resistance, I know I've reached the end of that particular place. And you're not going to have a line that goes all the way around. You're going to have holes, I guess would be what you would call them. And I'll try to get the camera to come in a little closer, see if I can do that without it blurring too much. If you try going all the way around it like a circle, you're going to not work. It's not going to work for you because you're going to run over the edges and the edges are actually what you're tracing. That's probably the best way to put it. You're tracing with your tool, your crochet hook, the end of a dried up ink pen, uh, let's see. I wouldn't use a toothpick because it's probably going to damage your paper because it would be too sharp. Um, orange stick, I think is what they call them. There are, those are things that manicurists use on your cuticles. And once you figure out where you're going with it and you can actually see the pattern starting, it does get easier because then you can kind of figure out where the next piece is. And it does look pretty cool. And so this is one you can do without any special tools or machinery or anything like that. I know I've got more stuff going on out here somewhere. And I'm trying to find the edge. It's 
Sometimes you have to pick it up. Nope, that would be it. That's the whole flower. So I just need to find the next flower, which is over in here. And if you hold your paper down, you can flip it up to see where it is that you're trying to go. Make it a little bit easier to figure out if you're getting all of your shape in that you are attempting to get. go to the other side and it I think has pretty much the same design this one ended with this tulip and this one goes on to have another one so I'm gonna to have to figure out where I'm stopping on that so I know I want the tulip and I want that particular little flower so I need the stem which is somewhere in here there we go do you see how that caught it? And it's just in that spot. And I know that it's going to come down. And I'm getting stuck because it's got a branch that goes off too. There we go. It takes some patience. Sometimes I don't have it. But it's also easier with practice. And you'll want to practice with your different things. If you have different size crochet hooks or knitting needles or anything really that has a pointed end that's not pointy pointy, you can just, you can check it out, try it out. Uh-oh, <laughs> I got unaligned. So what you do if that happens is you turn it over and just line it up like a stencil. It should just kind of go right into place. And I need this one to go up that way. There's a little leaf around here. Yep, right there. And there's another leaf right around. Yep, right there. And then the flower itself. There's the base. And then the top part of the tulip. All right, so there's that side of it. But when you flip it over, you see the embossed picture there? I hope, because I can't see. I think I'm gonna use some fired brick. And I'm just gonna use my finger. And I'm gonna go around the edges of that flower. And come back and I'm gonna hit these tulips with it too. Let's see, and I think I want to use the, I'm just going to use some blue on the middle because our flowers are blue and red. So pretty. I don't think I have any green, so I'll have to pull some green. And I'm going to make my little sprays, these two little sprays here. I'm going to use the gold on those. Just so they shimmer a little bit. They're a little bit of an extra. They're not really the main focus. Let me put some in the center of that flower too. I'm thinking peeled paint will look good. And again, I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm just gonna brush over. And I'm not worried that I'm going off because I'm getting ready to do another step with this too. Oh, 
Well, that was silly. I just smeared that paint right on the palm of my other hand. Not paint. Peeled paint. Distress oxide. <laughs> All right. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of my Spectrum Noir markers out. And I'm going to splatter this a little bit before I make it a tab. And I don't really have a dark, dark blue. Closest I get is Peacock, I think. And that's not, no, Ocean Wave. And that's not really what I want. I might try. Hmm. I might not even do that one. Let's see. But I do want to try some of the red. It's a different shade of red, but there's several different shades of red in the digitals. Oh, there we go. All right, so there's some sparkly red. I don't want it to look like Christmas, but I do think I want some green in there. And then I definitely want some gold. Get out of there. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry for a second. Okay, so that's dry, and I am going to make a large tag out of this. And what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna come straight in across on both sides of this, and then I'm going to fussy cut around that. All right, so I am going to put a piece of backing behind that because it's not going to be strong enough by itself. And I think that's not gonna be big enough. You know, I could try it. What's the worst that could happen, right? I know that that's not big enough, but it does become part of the tag. Putting it this way. And then I can add a, yet again another piece that would go across there. I'm having to really think hard about this one, that's not what I wanted to do. If I do that, and I can round to the corners, and I can actually make this another pocket like I did the other one. I thought I knew how this was going to work, and it's saying, nope, I'm not going to work like that. You're going to have to figure something else out. So, I'm figuring something else out. And I'm going to cut off the part of this that's not going to be seen, because I don't want to just bury it and waste that piece of paper. So I'm going to put this right there, and I can tell that I need I can cut off here to here. And I can save that for something else. Okay, I need to ink the edge of this. And this is a corner punch, decorative corner punch, <laughs> that's being very grabby. And I don't know why, but I always have to come back in and clean up these edges. I don't know why it punches so far in. Kind of strange. Maybe I'm using it wrong. That could probably be a major part of it. All right, so I'm going to ink around these edges as well. Be 
because this part is going to be the tab part. It's going to be sticking out there just like that. So this is another fancy tab. That is not the lid. <laughs> okay. Because I had two fairly simple tabs. One tab that was a little more elaborate, and this one's going to be a little more elaborate as well. And I'm going to just go ahead and glue around that edge. All right, that's pretty straight. And actually, I wonder if this tab could be a pocket that way as well. Just slide in that way. I think that could work. And see, this isn't even my tag with a purpose or whatever it is that the term is. I'll have to look up the thing with the job again so that I can make sure that I'm doing it right. Okay, so let's make sure it's straight and that it's where I want it to be. I think I want it to be right there, I'm thinking. So this would be the tab. So if it was on the paper, it would stick out over the edge like that, and I may make a dangle or something to hang out of that hole right there. I do not know why that hole is there. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it's there. So yeah, I can do that, and I can make that maybe one of my sneaky pockets or something. So there is another tab. It's a large tab, but there's another tab. Okay, one more. <laughs> I forgot I had this one. I have another Paisley embossing folder. So we're going to try something a little different that I haven't tried yet. I'm going to try doing a little bit of fanciness with this embossing plate. Is this, this looks pretty blue, fairly blue. And I'm going to add some watercolor. These are watercolor pens. It is watercolor brush pens from Home Cube. And I think that I actually got this set um, from, I think it was on Amazon. It may have been something that I found at Tuesday morning as well. And this is going to be a very loose and free-flowing looking paper. Paper. Because I'm doing all of this with the inks and then I'm gonna spray it. And so we're gonna go in the side with this one. I'm going to spray it and then I'm going to put it through the embossing process. We'll see what happens. I will at least get paper to make a base for a tab, right?
Okay, so this is one of the things that I've never done before, that I've seen it done, and so I'm hoping that I can make it work. Probably need to make sure I've got the right size paper in here. That'll work. And so I'm gonna take my mister, my misting spray, and I'm going to just mist over that. I'm going to put this in there very carefully because I don't want to smudge. I want it to run together, but I don't want to smudge it because there's a difference. One will look good and one won't. Let's see if anything happened. What if anything happened? Okay. Oh, I was looking at the wrong side. Huh. <laughs> I like that. That looks pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to let it dry. And actually, I'm going to help it dry. Okay, that looks really cool. So now I need to figure out what kind of tab I want to make out of it. Okay, again, I have toys and stuff, and I realize that not everybody is going to have the same things as I do. But I encourage you to experiment with the things that you do have because, you know, you never know what you'll find out, and it may be the coolest thing anybody has ever seen. Let's see, I wanna go, I wanna go this way because, do I want to go that way? Hmm. Yes, I wanna go that way. But I should have, I should have cut off the bottom before I folded it, but I'll go ahead and do that now. So that's going to be the right height. Yes. Woo! Too much thinking. And I will save that probably. I, who am I kidding? I save everything. Okay. But what I want to do is I've got this punch that makes a three inch tag. And what I want to do is make it be a tab. So I am going to wrestle it in here because it's all, it is not smooth paper, so it's not wanting to feed down the right way. I am going to find where I want my center to be, what image I want to be in the center. And again, I'm wanting to make sure that I have room here at the top. Otherwise I'll get two, tag, two tags, which isn't a horrible thing, but I want mine to stay together so that I can have a two-sided tag. Tab. I cannot get tag and tab straight to save my life. All right. Now, because it was embossed, I've got a little cleanup to do on some of the edges because punches don't like that. Punches don't like a lot of things. They are persnickety, finicky things, punches are. But other than that little spot, it didn't do too bad. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and ink around this, and I think I'm gonna use my Uncharted Mariner again because I just <laughs> I just really, really love this color. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful color. I'm gonna carefully go around because I did not leave myself much room up there. I meant to leave a little bit more connection and than, than what I did. I, I love the way that turned out. I will need to do more of that. Now, one thing about it, I did paint the side that ends up with the debossed image. And so that means that all of the 
all of the embossing you normally would see raised up is actually down, like my flower is down. But I'm okay with that. I just need to remember next time to make sure which way I want it to go. I am going to get my little hole punch because I want to put a uh, an eyelet and a little hook on there. And I'm just going to use my crocodile. I'm not going to worry about the hole punch. Let's see what color do I want it to be though. I think I want it to be dark green. So I'm going to go ahead and punch my hole. And I'll make sure I don't go in too far because I do want this to be a tab. If I go in too far, it's going to interfere with its tabness. I don't know. Maybe I want blue. Do you want that blue? Yes, that's pretty. All right, so I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to press. And there we go. Now I'm going to get a bulb pen. I'll stick with the dark blue and I don't know what I'm gonna put on this but I'm gonna put this on there so that I don't forget that I want to do that and I may change the color of the bulb pen when it comes time and so there's another tag tab <laughs> it'll go on the side of the paper like that and it will be glued on both sides this part will hang off I like that <laughs> Okay, thought I was done. I was, had this all set out to show you my five tabs. I'm moving things out of the way, and what do I find but my gift bag. Didn't use the gift bag, so I'm going to put the gift bag back into the pile because I will have to use that at some point. I totally forgot about it. I was so focused on trying to do the different embellishments. Oh well, <laughs> but we did get, I have got everything just shoved everywhere. Okay, we know that it was five tabs. I can't find that either right now. We know it was five tabs and we were supposed to use a file card and embossing. I think I just got excited about embossing. And, and I, so I'm not even gonna say, say gift bag. Well, I just did, but it doesn't count. So let me get here. I'll use the gift bag to show you how it would look on a page. How about that? So here is the first tab that we made and we used a file card. And this can also be a pocket on the, on the side of it. And that's what it would look like on the other side of the page. Then we did the embossed punch tab and it just goes on the page like that. It's hard to see through my fingers, I know. Then we made this tab, which will go on the other side of the page. This is the back side. And then this side is the side we put the butterfly and the little embossed rose in the scalloped circle. And then this tab would look like that on the page. And it ends up with a pocket back here that we don't know is a pocket because it looks like just part of the decoration. There's the back side of that tag, B tab. And then here's the final tab that we made with the watercolor pens inside the embossing folder. And that's what it looks like on the back and put an eyelid in there with a bulb pen. All right, I had fun doing these. This is a little different. I am terrible at making tabs. Well, I mean, they turn out well. I'm terrible about remembering to make them because I'll just say it. They're not my favorite thing to make, but I am quite happy with how these turned out and I may 
may just like making them a little bit more now. <laughs> Be sure to check out everyone else who is taking part in this May Mayhem Mystery Junk Journal Challenge that is hosted by Dear Julie Julie, and I will have those links below. If you have any questions about anything, be sure to ask in the comments. Thank you for joining me today, and as always, be kind. Bye.